This is meant to be a quick review of hypertension for the physical therapist. Hopefully you have an understanding of hypertension before watching this, and this is meant to refresh your memory. So if you remember hypertension, it is a diagnosis uh, where someone has a blood pressure of their systolic above 140 and the diastolic above 90, and the key it has to be on two separate occasions, at least two weeks apart. So it can't just be one day where the person's nervous or something stressful is going on. There has to be a pattern. When someone has hypertension, it's not it's assessing the blood pressure, but then it's also looking at the other risk factors going on. So they have hypertension. Are they also diabetic? Do they also have issues with inactivity or obesity? And then what's the current level of damage? Is there damage already done to the heart and the vessels? And what can be done to stop future damage? These are just some statistics on hypertension. You, you see the numbers are pretty high. Uh, one in three Americans have high blood pressure. You see that the risk goes up and up and up with high blood pressure for stroke and also for a heart attack. Um, so there, there's a lot of uh, risk associated with hypertension. Not a very exciting diagnosis, but a diagnosis that can cause a lot of issues. And here you go, you see money about statistics and, and how expensive hypertension is. But for me and for other physical therapists, I think this is the key one right here. Only about a half people know they have hypertension. So think about your patient who walks into the clinic. They may not have, know they have hypertension. You measure their blood pressure. You find the pattern of high blood pressure. You can refer them back to their doctor and hopefully encourage lifestyle medications, uh, medications to help uh, bring down the risk. And you see um, some of the benefits that take place by reducing the systolic blood pressure. Stroke goes down, heart disease, death goes down uh, through treatment. These are the classifications. Uh, I mentioned 140 over 90 as being that, that threshold for diagnosis. I will point out the pre-hypertension. Uh, when you're in pre-hypertension, you're typically not receiving medical treatment. It's more lifestyle modifications, encouragement to prevent the onset of hypertension. Remember that blood pressure is affected by cardiac output, and you know cardiac output is stroke volume times heart rate and times the total peripheral resistance. So think about that equation and think about uh, what factors would change in that equation to cause blood pressure to go up. Typically what it is, it's going to be that narrowing of the arterioles is what we see. Uh, there can be nitric oxide levels build up in the arteries, which cause narrowing, which cause the pressure to go up, which causes blood pressure to go up. Treatment. Uh, treatment is, is uh, pretty straightforward. The idea of monitoring blood pressure um, routinely, uh, quitting smoking if you're a smoker, quitting smoking, uh, fruits, vegetables, whole grains, these are the things you should be focusing on. Reduce sodium, saturated fats, sugars, uh, limit alcohol consumption, exercise is important, and physical activity, increase that. And you see some of the guidelines there. And just being knowledgeable, things about too much sodium. And I say these are straightforward because we know if you do these things, blood pressure will come down. But they're hard things to implement. They're hard lifestyle changes. These are some of the uh, modification, some of the recommendations you might see, uh, national recommendations, and uh, I wouldn't tell you necessarily need to memorize these or anything like that, but you see some of the thresholds. So you want to try to get blood pressure below the 150 and the 90 for older adults. Uh, at, at one point, there were uh, over-treatment of blood pressure, hypertension in older adults, causing the uh, onset of hypotension, which then increased the risk of falls. So the guidelines are a little less strict for older adults than they are younger adults. And you see in general population, you're aiming for uh, getting the diastolic uh, below 90. And then you also see aiming for below 140 for systolic. This is the key thing to point out is that for a lot of people, it takes two medications to control their blood pressure. So you see if, if one is not enough, add a second medication. So it's not atypical to see someone with a beta blocker and a diuretic or an ACE inhibitor and a diuretic and there's a back and forth with the physician to try to find that that proper balance and um, you see if add a third drug if you need to and then if that doesn't work really going to a specialist might be the, the key there. 
There are other special guidelines. I'm not going to talk about those, but you can find those in JNC8. Medical interventions touched on the medication. So you see diuretics, ACE inhibitors, beta blockers, calcium channel blockers, um, alpha adrenergic blockers, and central acting alpha agonists. So a, a wide range of it. Sometimes uh, sleep is very important, or always is important, but for these patients there might be sleep apnea going on. And getting CPAP for patients who have sleep apnea can actually cause a decrease in the blood pressure. Understanding the extremes of blood pressure is good to know. So when do you not work with somebody? And I always like to point out to students how high some of these values are. So just because someone's at 150 over 100, you think, oh, that's pretty high. I can't do anything with them. Well, actually, you can. You can, you can exercise with these individuals. You need to monitor them better, look at their responses, um, encourage them to go out and seek treatment for their blood pressure. But we can, we can have pretty high blood pressure and still safely work with these patients. So that wraps up your review of hypertension. Go ahead on to Blackboard and take the quiz.